Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here. It's bringing me seven game NBA main site on Tuesday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos breaking out NBA, NFL, PGA, and esports, daily fantasy sports slates. Before I get into the uh, the breakdown for uh, Tuesday's slate, I do want to say again, thank you guys for all the support. Uh, I believe now we're at 4.07 thousand subscribers. With all free content, the easiest way to support me is just leave a like button on the video, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, hit the notification bell so you know when I go live or you know when I upload videos, and spread the word. If you have friends that play DFS and you like my content, uh, just spread the word. I really appreciate that. Um, and if you can't watch the videos for some reason, I do also upload on Apple Podcasts. It's the DK DFS Show. The link is in the description below. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. So before we get into players and the prices for the seven-game slate, what we can do is we can look back at my lineup here from Monday's slate. So Monday, I warned you guys, play light. I hope you did. It was just an absolute mess of a slate. Almost every, like no one really playing the full allotment of min minutes. Um, the DeAndre eight news coming like two minutes before lock. Hope you guys enjoyed that live stream. That was crazy. Uh crazy sweat there like two or three minutes before lock the deandre eight news and then there's news that he gets clear and he's on his way to the stadium it was just it was like a top honestly i've been playing dfs for like eight to ten years that was one of like the top just like dfs stories uh that was absolutely insane uh but if you did catch the live stream uh and again deandre Aiden was out. i was like get on Devin booker make sure you play booker and play sarich if you can get to him um, now, unfortunately, you got a little bit unlucky because DeAndre Aiden ended up playing, but Sarge, Sarge was still really good um, in his limited time. So if you played Sarge, that actually worked out for you. Should have played more Mets, right? We should have had no DeAndre Aiden at all. Uh, but, um, yeah, let's go over my lineup. So I went with Mike Conley, the Utah guys. Uh, they only played the first half. That was a little surprising because Utah still had something to play for. They could still move up down in the in the Western Conference. So, I was shocked there. I did not see that coming. Don Mitchell out. I liked Conley. I liked Clarkson. I liked Ingles. All three were on pace to absolutely have a really solid day, and they don't play the second half. Uh, Devin Booker, again, with eight with that eight news. I, I was all over Booker because we knew Phoenix had to win. He was going to play the huge myth. Jimmy Butler was a guy I was also really high on. He has 30 fancy points right now. It's 7.2K. Only 42% on this one, so... Um, pretty happy about that. I think I did make a mistake though here playing Maxi Kleber and Boban together. So my thought process was even though Kleber was coming off the bench, I thought he would still get a good amount of run at the four with Boban and then like obviously run like the backup five too. He basically just strictly played the backup five when like when Boban was uh, not out there, it was Kleber. When Kleber was not out there, it was Boban. So um, I should have played Darius Basley there. That was a mistake. Again, I'm always open honest with you guys. Uh, full disclosure, I think me not getting to Basley was a mistake on the slate. Not not even results oriented. I know Basley had an amazing day, but he was 3.4K in a good matchup starting. I should have played Darius Basley. I think me getting to Maxi Kleber, I was trying to get a little bit too cute. Again, I, I mentioned I was playing light, only played GPPs, but I think that was definitely a mistake on my part, getting to Kleber over a guy like Basley. I should have just ate the salary. Bloodso, um, you know, he was really solid for his price of 5.4K with no Giannis. I took the risk playing both him and Milton. Milton didn't play a lot of minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, basically no one did in the slate. Siakam didn't play in the fourth quarter. I do want to mention one value play that I mentioned as a super, super low-owned play that uh, it was Chris Boucher. Uh, I said, you know, if Ibaka's out, Boucher is a guy that when he gets minutes, he absolutely crushes I think Boucher went for over 50 fancy points. Now, I, I couldn't pull the trigger on him because, again, I'm a one-lineup guy. But if you did, if you made multiple lineups and you played Chris Boucher, you probably had an amazing day. So, um, yeah, I have no exposure to the late game, so I don't know if I'm going to cash. I'm really hoping those Lakers starters don't play in the second half because that's basically what we've seen from, like, every single team. So I'll be really tilted if, like, LeBron and AD just play 35 minutes for no reason. And the Lakers are locked into the one seed, so... I'm hoping they just play like the first half. And then, yeah, the Denver side, I didn't get to anyone. I mean, Jokic, MPJ, Murray all looked decent, but um, that's the route I, I took. So we'll see if it holds. Again, I'm really hoping this Denver Lakers take it easy on their starters. But, um, yeah, that's it. Again, an absolutely crazy slate. 
Um, and uh, we're going to have another one tomorrow. So uh, in the last few days here of NBA DFS regular season, again, guys, I really do recommend taking it easy. There's so much up in the air with players, their minutes, how like, guys, you know, teams locked in. Are they going to rest players? Are they going to play in limited minutes? Play light if you do play NBA uh, for the NBA DFS for the last few days here. So um, as far as Bovada lines, we only have one game out right now because there's just still a lot of ups, um, new, news up in the air. There's a lot of guys resting, a lot of teams out of it. So there's going to be a lot of value again for this slate. And again, trying to get those value plays right is key. So the only game we have out right now for tomorrow is Boston and Memphis. A 224.5 over under, Boston are 4.5 point favorites. So normally I go position by position in my breakdowns here. I'm going to go team by team just because, again, there is so much news to go over. So let's start with Brooklyn here. Um, Brooklyn, we know. They're resting Levert, Allen, and Joe Harris. They are currently locked into the 7th seed. They're playing the Magic, who are currently locked into the 8th seed. So both teams don't have anything to play for. So that worries me with players and their minutes. Now, there's a couple teams that are still playing for stuff. I will mention that. That's kind of where I want my exposure right now. And, and then, you know, value with a lot of the teams that are resting players. That's my approach is I'm going to get the studs in, in the teams that I know where they're going to get the minutes. Right? So Russell Westbrook, uh, you know, Houston, I think, can still move up and down. We just know Mike Antoni is not going to take any easy on his minutes. No Harden. I love Westbrook. The Spurs, they still have a shot to make the playoffs. I have interest in San Antonio. Phoenix, they still have an outside chance to make it. Booker, Aiton, I think look good. Philly's resting, guys. Boston, they're locked into the three seed. They have nothing to play for. Memphis, they're locked into the eight seed. Don't have a whole lot to play for. Do they still give John Morant huge minutes? I don't know. That's a tough spot. Portland, they have everything to play for again. Them, Spurs, Suns, fighting to get in that playing game. I want a lot of exposure to, to Portland. I feel really good about their starters. Dallas, I assume from resting, Doncic and Porzingis, I think they're back in this one. They can also still move. So I feel pretty confident in Dallas and, and Luka and Porzingis. Those will be my only two options. The Pelicans, they're out of it. They have nothing to play for. They're already sitting some guys out. I wouldn't be surprised if they set a few more out. The Kings, also out of it. Again, I expect... We already have some guys out there. I expect maybe a few more to be uh, ruled out tomorrow. Uh, and then Milwaukee, Washington, both teams have nothing to play for as well. Bucks locked into the one seed. It's a back-to-back. -back. I don't even know if Giannis plays. I don't think like Bledsoe Middleton play. We'll see. Washington, they're out of it. Um, do they still give the young guys like Troy Brown, Bryant minutes? I mean, they still have other guys they can use. So, whew, it's a headache of a slate, guys. But, um, all right, let's go back to Brooklyn here. So, no Levert, no Allen, no Joe Harris is huge. No Garrett Temple. So, they're pretty thin. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Justin Anderson, 8. Musa, 9. Claxton is not. I don't know why they don't have him out. He is not on the roster. So, that's 9 active players. Um, let's start with the two guys at the top, uh, Tyler Johnson and Chioza. So, I think both are in play value options. Um, both probably get 25 or so minutes, maybe a little bit more. Um, I would probably prefer Tyler Johnson at 5 one two Chioza. He's the better offensive player. I think he has a little bit more upside. But I think there's probably going to be better value elsewhere. And the matchup, not really the best against Orlando. So, don't know if I'm going to get to either of those guards. If you did make me pick, though, I would go Tyler Johnson. Um, Krooks is at 4-1. I assume he's going to start at center. They also have Donta Hall they can use. Um, I have a little bit of interest here in Krooks. Uh, if we get about 30 minutes from him, I think that's solid. Again, the matchup not necessarily the best. He's a guy that can hit the three. So I have some interest there in, in Krooks and value option. I also have some interest in TLC. He's had some decent games. One of those stars have ruled out where right? he went for 33 and 31 minutes. So I think he's fine 2-3-6. But I think there could be, again, better value options in other games. It's kind of just too TBT right now. So um, finally, Donta Hall, he, he makes for just a dart throw in GPP. So I think we probably get 15 to 20 minutes from him at almost min price. I'm not going to get to Lance Thomas at 3-1. The last guy I'll mention here is Justin Anderson at min price. Maybe he gets 20, 25 minutes. If that's the case, I think he could get you there. But there's probably going to be better value elsewhere. So all in all, the Nets are a team that I think some guys are in play, but I don't know if one really stands out. And um, I think there, there probably is going to be value better elsewhere in other games. So all in all, I don't know if I'm going to get to anyone from Brooklyn, even with all those guys out. 
and guys I think do have some upside are a guy like Tyler Johnson, maybe a Karooks or TLC. Uh, let's move on to Orlando. So Orlando, I'm a little bit worried here, right? They're locked in to the eight seed. They have nothing to play for. Do they give the starters normal normal run? I don't know. Vucevic, if I knew he was going to play 35-plus minutes in this spot, I would really like him. But, like I said, Orlando has nothing to play for, so his minutes are up in the air. Aaron Gordon is considered, he's not going to play, doubtful. Um, Fournier, is he, he's doubtful as well, also not going to play. So, obviously, that's a boost to Vucevic, right? With a lot of these guys out. Terrence Ross is um, also out. He left the bubble due to a personal matter. Um, so, yeah, guys like Fultz, Augustine, if you're going to make him pick one of those guards, I would lead Markel Fultz. I played 33 minutes that last game. He's a guy that does have upside. And if they rest like a Vucevic, I could see Fultz having a decent game. So a little bit of interest there. Again, I would just prefer uh, getting to Fultz over Augustine. He's a younger guy. He's a guy I think would get more run if they do end up like resting some guys. And then finally, I mean, you guys have like James Ennis, Gary Clark, Ken Birch, um, these are guys I would, uh, I think Ennis and Clark are, are solid, right? Ennis played, or Clark played 33 minutes that last game with a lot of those guys. I had Ennis played, um, 24. Bulls should get decent run if maybe they rest Vucevic and that'll be even more, uh, you know, minutes to go around for those guys. A guy like Ken Birch, I think I only would look to Ken Birch if, is if they rest Vucevic. So yeah, a lot still up in the air here. Mo Bamba, um, again, only would maybe consider him as a dart throw if Nikola Vucevic gets ruled out. Let's move on to Houston, San Antonio. So Houston, I think Russell Westbrook with no Harden is one of the top plays of the day at nine three. And let me confirm this, but I'm, I'm very, uh, or I'm pretty sure that they can still move up and down in the standings right now in the West. Um, if I could uh, scroll down, that would be great. It's not letting me. Um, One sec. Okay, so they're currently the four seed. OKC is a game and a half back. I think they could still catch them. Um, either way, though, like it wouldn't matter because they're going to play each other. Well, Utah could still catch OKC. So, I don't know. Either way, I think I don't think like with Russell Ross with Westbrook playing that he's going to be limited. That's like Mike D'Antoni is not a guy that's going to limit his players, so... I do like Westbrook a lot here at 9-3. I think he gets 35 minutes here with no James Harden in a good match against the Spurs. I do really, really like Westbrook. Covington at 6-7 is going to play decent minutes, but I don't know if I can recommend him. We have how status up near. Austin Rivers saved me the other night. Um, absolutely went off for 60 fancy points. Um, I cashed everything uh, last night, so that was great. Um, you know, I think the ownership will go up on him, but... He's a guy that, you know, again, he is a good shooter. And when he's shooting well, he's going to shoot the ball a lot. So I still think he's in play. Uh, he should get good run with no Harden. Uh, obviously, that's a high usage guy out of the offense. I think Macklemore is certainly in play at 4-7. Um, both viable cheap options for sure. And if House misses, again, that's even more minutes to go around for those guys. Jeff Green and Tucker, I don't know if we have to get to them. Eric Gordon looks like he's going to be back Wednesday. And I think that really is it for Houston. So uh, the clear play for me, obviously, is Westbrook at 9-3. I think Rivers, Macklemore are viable, cheap options. Let's talk about the Spurs. So the Spurs, they can still make the playoffs. Uh, and we have Derek White status up in there. This is pretty big news. If Derek White is out, I like DeRozan and I like DeJounte Murray a good amount. Um Probably would give the edge to Murray for a 2K discount. Both, again, they, they, they do really have to win. Maybe Popovich extends DeRozan a little bit here, maybe 35-plus minutes. So it's a really, really good match against Houston, too. So I have interest in DeMar DeRozan at 8K, and I have interest in DeJounte Murray. And DeJounte Murray, especially if Derek White is out, like I like the upside a good amount here of DeJounte Murray matched up against Houston in a really up-tempo game with a high-usage guy possibly like White out of the offense. We've seen DeJounte Murray go for 40-plus, even 50 a couple of games. So... I like DeJounte Murray at 6'2". Um, and then finally, I'm not going to get to Pirtle because Houston runs small ball. I'm worried about his minutes. Lonnie Walker, Kelvin Johnson are viable punts, but I think there's probably better value elsewhere. 
Patty Mills, you could consider him an almost min price. He didn't play that last game, but I think if Derek White's out, he probably would get about 20 minutes. Lastly, though, I do have a little bit of interest in Rudy Gay because this is a matchup I could see him getting good run as at the small ball five. Um, the minutes haven't been huge on him, but he's been a very, very productive player. 24 minutes, 29 fancy points, 26 minutes, 42 fancy points, 21 minutes, 33 fancy points, 29 minutes, 37 fancy points. He's been really good. Maybe he gets to 30 in this one, and again, again, a game the Spurs have to win. So I have a little bit of interest there in Rudy Gay, um, and, and that's really it for me. So let's move on to Phoenix, Philly. Again, Phoenix, they have to win, so I have interest here. Philly, resting a lot of their players. We have Tobias and Horford both stats up in the air. We already have, oh, let's go to Philly real quick. So we already have no Embiid, no Ben Simmons, no Josh Richardson. Horford and Harris are questionable. I assume they're probably not going to go. So it could be Phoenix going up against a lot of backups in a game they have to win. Booker and Aiden, I think, look good at their respective prices. Booker's at 8-8. Again, I was really high on him. The last game didn't play in the fourth because the game was a blowout. Still went for 50 fancy points. Yeah, I think he's one of the better spin-ups of the day just because we know the minutes will be there on him. And we know the minutes will be there on Aiden as long as he doesn't miss a coronavirus test. That was, again, crazy. Only played 17 minutes. I assume he's back in the starting lineup. I assume he plays 35-plus minutes in a game Phoenix does have to win. So those two guys... I like uh, even at 7-9 at 8-8. Rubio's at 6-6. Again, just a contrarian play. I would just rather get to, to Booker and Aiden for a little bit more. And the value with the Phoenix Suns, I'm not going to get to anyone else. Let's talk about Philly now. So again, no Embiid, no Ben Simmons, no Josh Richardson. Horford and Harris. These are two guys I would like if they do play. But again, I would be a little bit worried about their minutes too. Like, do they limit them? So... If both Harrison and Horford play, I like them because, again, three high usage guys out of the offense. If they're both out, then this, this is where it gets interesting. So a guy like Alec Burks and Shake Milton at 5-1 and 4-3, I think look really solid. Burks is a guy that's been shooting the ball a lot, 15 and 14 times. He's had some solid fancy point games. This is a good matchup here against Phoenix. I also, again, have interest in Shake Milton. He probably gets extended a little bit more, so those two guards I think look pretty good. GR3 at 3.8. Um, I don't know if I get to him. Uh, Mike Scott at 3.6. Probably not for me either. Um, Thibel at 3.2 intrigues me because he's the, the youngest of the bunch. Like I could see him getting extended for maybe 30 plus minutes at almost min price. He's a guy that he has upside with all these guys out. Like I could see Matisse Thibel going for a big game here. Uh, the good thing about him is. He is going to get you a he's a really good defender. He'll most likely get you like a couple blocks, a couple steals. Like he's a guy that will get you a lot of those peripheral stats. And if he can get if he can get going scoring with possibly a lot of guys out for Philly, I like Matisse Thibel a 3-2. Um Korkmaz is a guy that obviously can get hot behind the three-point land. Um, I think he is gonna get a lot more minutes in this game, maybe 25 or so. He's at min price. I think he looks like a good GPP play. Um, and then the bigs. This is dependent on if Horford and Tobias play. If they're both out, then either Kyle O'Quinn or Norvell Pelle will start at center. Whoever starts, I would like, but the other, the backup would be viable too. Like Kyle O'Quinn hasn't been playing a whole lot, but we know this is a guy that is super, super productive. If he starts at center and gets like 20 minutes of men price, he's one of the best value plays of the day. Or if they start Norvell Pelle, right? So whoever starts at center, if Tobias and Horford are out, I would like for, uh, for Philly. So, uh, that's kind of my breakdown. Again, there's a lot of, uh, you know, still news up in the air. They're obviously Tobias Horford. That's the big news we're waiting on right now with Philly. Boston. Good match here against Memphis, but I'm worried. They are locked into the three seed. They have nothing to play for. Do they still give their main guys the good run? I don't know. I'm Again, I'm a little bit worried here with, uh, with Boston. The prices do look good on some of these guys. But I don't know if they're going to get extended. So, you know, if I was going to take a shot on one of these guys, probably would be Tatum at 7-8. Um, played 42 minutes that last game, went for 53 fans. Points. Like he's the guy that has the most upside of the bunch. And if he gets his, like, 35 minutes, he could have a really solid day for his price. But, again, my worry is they do limit them. If they do limit the starters, I don't think I'm going to get any value. They're, they're still a very, very deep team. So, that's my breakdown there in Boston. Not a whole lot of exposure. If I was going to play one, I would take a shot on Tatum and just hope the starters get their normal minutes. On the Memphis side, they're locked into the eighth seed. They have to play a playing game. They can't move up. So 
Do they limit their starters a little bit? I don't know. Uh, I would guess probably not. John Morant's at 8-3. He probably gets 35 or so minutes. It's a tougher spot there against Boston, and I just think I like the spots elsewhere a little bit more. So just a contrarian option there. JV uh, only shot the ball twice. I didn't get to watch a game. People said that they just kind of like doubled him a lot, uh, just forced the ball out of his hands. Um, obviously a little bit worrisome. So JV is a guy that I think goes very, very low on. But if we get like 30-plus minutes from JV at 7-2, he could crush. Again, he was on pace to absolutely crush that game against OKC. Foul trouble in the blowout hurt him. But he had 24 minutes, 40 fancy points. Like that's the type of upside JV can have here. I just I don't know what the Mets will be like. Dylan Brooks is the last guy I will mention. When Triple J's been out, he's been shooting the ball a ton. 17, 18, 26 times that last game. Now, my issue with Dylan Brooks is he is a little bit more scoring dependent. But if he's going to put up those type of shots every single game at 5-4, even in a tough spot, I think you have to have a little bit of interest there in Dylan Brooks. Portland Dallas. So this is a game I feel pretty good about targeting. Like if you just want to get your, if you want to get like Westbrook and your studs in this game, I think that's a really solid strategy to the slate. Or again, or Booker or Aiton, right? Uh, those are like the studs. I'm, uh, I feel pretty good about targeting Lillard. Again, Portland, they have to win. He's playing. He's going to play 40 minutes in a close game. Um, didn't have the best game there against the Clippers. Bounced back in a huge way against Philly. Went for almost 70 fancy points. Yeah, he's a little bit more up and down, but the upside is enormous with Dame, right? He can go for 70, 80 plus in a good match against Dallas. I have I have interest in Dame. Uh, again, what we know with these Portland guys, they're going to play the big minutes. So that is key on this slate. I like Lillard at 9-8 for that minute security. I have interest in CJ. I think he goes very low owned, uh, but we have seen games, you know, where when Lillard struggles, it's CJ that takes over. Lillard struggled that game against the Clippers. CJ won for 39 minutes and almost 50 fancy points. So, if you don't get to Lillard, I don't mind getting to CJ as a, again, contrarian option. And then Nurkush at 9K, I like him a lot here. Um, I think he goes very low owned. That last game against the Philly, he got in foul trouble. Again, I was a little bit worried there against Bede, and Bede ended up getting injured, though, later in the game. Um, sure, slightly worried about foul trouble here, but uh, if he stays out of foul trouble and gets, again, Portland has to win. I think no white side, too. I think we get close to 35 minutes from Nurkic in a must-win game. He's a guy that will do it all. Rebounds, assists, blocks, steals, scoring the ball. I like Nurkic. Uh, the issue is Dame has been playing so well and shooting the ball a ton. It's kind of been taking away some usage from Nurkic. So, again, like with these Portland starters, I think Dame is for sure going to be the highest owned. But don't sleep on Yusuf Nurkic. The guy I've been really high on since the return. I like him at 9K. I think he goes low-owned. Mello's at 5'6". I'm actually fine getting to Mello. Again, these Portland starters, the big minutes. He's going to play about 35-plus minutes, 35 or so minutes. Um, he's fine in the mid-range if you go that way. Again, I think this slate, though, is setting up for the Stars and Scrubs with so much value on the slate, and then there being a lot of actually decent spend-ups on this slate compared to the slate tonight, right? Again, spend-ups I'm considering right now. A guy like Westbrook, DeRozan, Booker, Aiton, um... Lillard, Nurkic, Kristaps, uh, Luka. Um, like those are the guys I feel pretty good about getting to stars-wise. Um, I'm assuming Dale, again, Kristaps and Luka play in this game tomorrow, and I assume they get their normal minutes. Um, Gary Trent Jr., so he finally came back down to earth. And what I've been talking about since the, since the bubble, uh, they returned uh, NBA play, is he has a low floor if he's not hitting the threes. And we finally saw it there against Philly. 34 minutes, 10 fancy points. That's the type of floor he has. If he's not hitting the threes, he can go for under 10 fancy points. So he's been making me look dumb like every single slate. You want to say, I'm not getting to Gary Trent. I'll let others chase. I'll let others chase. He finally had that floor game, which I've been talking about. Um, again, that's it's the risk reward factor. Uh, he has a super low floor, but if he's knocking down those threes, he can go for 30 plus fancy points. I'm not going to get to him at 5 1, though. I think that's too expensive on a slate like this. Collins at 4 3. Not getting enough minutes for me to consider right now. The minutes are, are trending down for him. Not good. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to win there. Whiteside, or he's probably. So Whiteside is back. I thought he was still out. Either way, I don't think he plays huge minutes. Uh, he is 4 2, which is pretty cheap, but yeah, uh, I'm not going to get to him in this one. Again, that doesn't worry me too much, Nurkic. I still think Nurkic gets close to 35 minutes as long as he stays out of foul trouble. That's it for Portland. So 
Lillard, Nurkic, McCollum, CJ, I think all, or CJ and Mello, I should say, I think all certainly in play because, again, Portland, they have to win. They're going to get huge minutes. Dallas, Luka Porzingis, they rested the last game. Um, I guess that they ruled them out with injuries. Yeah, they should be back in this one. I like them both if they're going to play and not be limited. Again, I assume they won't be limited. It's a good match against Portland. I think we'd probably get 35-plus minutes from both. So I like Luka. I like Porzingis. Luka's under 11K. He's the do-it-all guy, right? He can fill up a stat sheet and have an enormous game scoring, too. Porzingis prices down at 8-2. I like that uh, from a guy that has a lot of block steal upside, too. So I like both these, these stars for Dallas. Again, I assume they do get the normal minutes. Um, and if they're back, I have no interest in the value. Now, if they rest Luka and Porzingis again, then it's a different story, right? Then it could be Boban season at 3-6, who I played tonight. He went off um, for, uh, what do you go, for 40 fancy points. Um, yeah, and then again, the guards would, be, would become a little bit more viable. Let's move on to New Orleans and Sacramento. So, Pelicans, they have nothing to play for. Drew, Ingram, Zion, already ruled out. Uh, I can't see Derek Favors playing this one. Veteran, but having injury, uh, knee problems this whole year. I have seen no reason why the Pelicans would play him. So, I'm assuming he's going to get ruled out. I don't think Favors plays in this one. Lonzo at 6'4". This is a little bit tricky. Again, they have nothing to play for. Uh, he's a, he's like obviously a starter in the normal rotation. Do they limit him in this one? That does worry me. The price came down a lot though, and with all those guys out, if he played as normal, if he gets like 30 minutes, he could absolutely crush his salary. I know he's been really struggling shooting, but with all those guys out, he does have that type of upside. Again, my worry is those minutes aren't necessarily secure with the Pelicans having nothing to play for. JJ Redick, a veteran, I'm worried about his minutes. I know he's playing well recently, but they have again nothing to play for. I think he possibly just gets rested in this one. So I'm not going to get to JJ at 4-3. Josh Hart at 4-1 is a younger guy, so I feel pretty good he will get run. I think, you know, if a lot of those guys rest, like, you know, JJ and Favors too, that's even more run for Josh Hart. So he's someone that kind of depends on news, but I like him at 4-1. Melly, Hayes, I assume they're the guys that are going to get the run, uh, um, you know, at center. So whoever starts, again, I'm assuming Favors doesn't play. I really don't see him playing this one. So whoever does start between Hayes and Melly, I would like probably uh, as a value option. Each one more 3-3. I don't know if I get to him. Then we get to my boy NAW. The preseason goat won me so much money in the preseason. Yeah, kind of dependent right now on uh, some player. I know we already have three of those guys out, but he's someone that could potentially start. Maybe they maybe they rest Lonzo too. If that's the case, then a guy like NAW has really high upside. He is a guy who is super, super aggressive offensively. So this is... Yeah, I'm kind of taking a wait-and-see approach. I want to see what the Pelicans do. Frank Jackson, another one of those guys, I think has a lot of upside. Uh, and if a lot, a lot more players rest, right, like J.J. rest, if they rest Favors, if they rest Lonzo, like it's Frank Jackson. Like if all those guys are out, for me, it's going to be like guys like Frank Jackson, uh, a, a guy like NAW, a guy like Josh Hart, Hayes Melly, possibly Okafor. Um, he hasn't played yet since the return I think he's still healthy, so I think he is still in, like on the roster. Uh, but yeah, obviously kind of a wait-and-see approach for the Pelicans. The worry is they don't have anything to play for, and it's the same thing with the Kings right now. Nothing to play for. Holmes already out. Bazemore, I believe, is questionable. I don't think he plays. Fox is out, too. So if Bogdan Bogdanovich plays and gets his normal minutes, like 30-plus at 5'5", five, five, I absolutely love him, but I'm worried. Right, it's Luke Walton, first of all, who don't even get me started. Bielitsa, if he just gives him his normal minutes, I could have won a GPP last night. But yeah, don't get me started with that. Second of all, again, they have nothing to play for. They have a pretty deep roster right now. Like guys, young guys that can eat, get some run, a like Kyle Guy, James, Yogi Ferrell. These guys could get minutes. So I'm worried about the with the Kings. Again, they have nothing to play for. If I knew Bogdan Madonovich was going to play 35 minutes at 5'5 five, five with no deer and fox. He would be like one of my favorite plays of the day. But I already expressed my worry. I don't know. Maybe he only plays a half. Maybe he gets rested. B leads, so I'm not getting to. I'm not getting to Buddy Healy. They're not taking the shot there. Um, the only other guys I'll mention is those value guys. So maybe a guy like Harry Giles at 3-2. He's a guy that one gets minutes. is pretty productive. So I like him. Um, again, we already have no Sean Holmes. Alex Lund started the last game. I have interest, but he's... 
a little bit older. Again, he's kind of been dealing with injuries. I could see him getting rested in, in this one. So if that's the case, again, I would really like Harry Giles. And then finally, Jabari Parker has, hasn't been in the regular rotation, but I think this is a game he could get extended here. And Jabari's a guy that has a lot of upside. Like he's a guy that will put the ball in the basket. So if a lot of these guys rest for the Kings, I could see Jabari starting and being one of the top value plays of the day at 3-1. So kind of dependent right now on news here for, uh, for Sacramento. Lastly, Milwaukee, Washington. Uh, this one's tricky. Again, both teams have nothing to play for. Giannis missed the game today with a mouth, uh, or with his tooth, I should say. Milton got limited. They don't have that up there yet, but I think he only played like 20 or so minutes. Blood, so got extended a little bit more, but still didn't play huge minutes either. This is a kind of a wait-and-see approach to me right now with Milwaukee. Um, even if the starters play, I'm very worried about the minutes. So I don't think I would get to them. If we have a lot of guys resting, so say they rest Giannis, Middleton, Bledsoe, Brooke Lopez, George Hill will probably get rested since he's a veteran. Then I could see getting to some of these younger guys. The guys I would consider, a guy like Pat Connaughton at 3-4. Like, I think he would have upside uh, if a lot of those guys rest. Um, Urson, possibly. But again, they still have Marvin Williams, Robin Lopez, DJ Wilson. So they still have other bigs that can use. A guy like Frank Mason or Sterling Brown. Like, those would be guys that become viable in a really good match for here against Washington. So, again, I'm going to take a wait-and-see approach, but those would be guys that would certainly, certainly be in play. Um, and, yeah, for Milwaukee, if a lot of those guys are out. Finally, Washington, again, they have nothing to play for. They are a mostly young roster, but um, maybe they give some of these guys that end of the bench more runs. So, I'm a little bit worried about Thomas Bryant's minutes. I'm a little bit worried about Troy Brown's minutes. If they get the normal run, like I like, I think that both are interesting contrarian plays. No one will play them. Rui, I'm not going to get him a 5-7-ish. Again, my worry is he's a veteran. I could see him getting limited a bit or not even playing. Um, so if you know if they rest like the normal starters, like let's just say they rest the normal starting five and they start like Mo Wag at, at the five at three two. I would like him a good amount as a value play. Mo Wagner is a guy that is. Again, a really good point per minute guy. So, depending right now on the, the news, like a lot of the starters, a guy like Jerry and Grant, I think, will get good run, probably start a point guard if, if those guys get ruled out. So, I would have interest there. Um, I mean, you could make an argument for like Gary Payton, Jonathan Williams, Pazinkis, or AP, I'll just say his name. So, yeah, Washington, we'll see. If they do rest up some guys, it could make some of those value guys in play. So that really wraps it up, guys. Um, seven games. This one's going to be a headache like it was tonight. Um, again, I recommend take it easy. There's a lot of question marks. Again, my strategy for this slate right now is play the players that have something, the teams that have something to play for, right? So the Stars, guys like Westbrook, guys like DeRozan, uh, Lillard, Nurkic, I think Porzingis and Luka get their normal minutes. Dallas can still move up and down the West. Like though, Booker and Aiton, like those are the stars I'm considering in this slate. I think I'm going to you know, probably go stars and scrubs and then pair them with some of those uh, value guys that could potentially open up in some of those games that you know teams have nothing to play for. So that's my strategy. Hope that the video helps. I think that is going to do it uh, for the video, though. So if you have been enjoying the content so far, guys, really appreciate it. If you leave a like button on the video, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. Um, I will be live streaming for this one, probably 30, uh, 30 to 40 minutes before a lot going over all the news. And this is going to be a crazy slate. So make sure you check out the live stream guys. Um, but yeah, thanks again, guys. Hope you guys all have a good day. Uh, and I will see you all, uh, in the live stream tomorrow.